Y'all, 2023 is almost over, and today we're going to be talking about whether 2023 was a good year for Wizard 101. There were a lot of in-game updates. Honestly, if you want to catch up on all of it, check out all the videos I uploaded this year. But I do feel like, you know, a lot of these updates followed a pattern, and I wanted to talk about some of the things they did really well that I hope to see next year, and some things that were pretty awful that I hope we never see again. Cheeky little review of Wizard 101's year. Let's get right into it. So for one, one of the things that you can easily easily see happening more and more as the year goes on is the rise of dual schooling. And I think for a lot of people that are used to a certain way that Wizard 101 was, or maybe like, you know, they haven't played the game in a while, dual schooling is a pretty new concept, right? How does one school just simply use another school so well? And if we're really talking about what Wiz did in 2023 to promote dual schooling, you'll see a notable pattern, right? We started with Aeon gear that only gave dual school to one school. If I was a fire, I was out of luck if I wanted to duel into anything but mint. But as time went on, they added templates where you could actually duel into more than one school. You could actually duel into three. And with the release of Wallaroo now, they're actually in the middle of phasing out a complete set of gear from wand to thame to ring that gives universal damage. So you could officially dual school into anything. How do I feel about dual schooling? I think it's kind of a mixed bag for me. I love the layer of strategy that it adds to the game. I think... It's very unique when you create a secondary identity to your school. But I think that Wiz's big challenge with dual schooling has been, how do you make it viable without making it so that some schools can literally play certain other schools better than the original? We've seen that. I've been calling them cosplay strategies in PvP, but honestly, this is a problem in PvE too. When you have really, really tankable schools like Death or Ice, and they can run an obscene amount of storm damage and even learn a lot of the spells that storm finds useful, you start running into an issue where really tanky schools can do what high damage for pip schools can do better than them themselves. And yet, when you don't abandon your primary school and actually try to fuse two different schools in a cool synergy, it's actually really hard to make that work, even with how free the stats allow you to be right now. That's a real balance they're gonna have to strike. The direction is clearly more dual schooling, but how do they make it where school identity doesn't become shattered? This is probably the, gonna be the big question of 2024. So as far as dual schooling, while I love some parts of it, I think some parts of it they do gotta like address as time goes on. I think another super notable thing that happened this year was the re-rise and the fall of pay to win gear once again in wizard 101 and what i mean by re-rises there used to be certain packs that gave gear that you needed in order to pvp or even make some even decent setups thankfully it's no longer in my inventory because it is so useless but i know y'all probably remember the days of the motorist overcoat which was a piece of gear that every school needed from a pack in order to pvp since then wiz has come a really really long way and very very often now even when a pack releases gear, what you'll notice is that there's comparable sets that you could also use outside of the pack. And a few months after the pack comes out, normally there's places to farm it. They were following that pattern, I would argue, until the release of the Burrower gear. Now, while I will give them credit for adding a boss that you can farm to get this gear now, for many, many months, this gear was supremely better than every other piece of gear in the game because no other gear just gave up a small stat that's easy to recover while covering all the other stats in such a defensive way. If you compared this specific set to the Eternal set in Aeon gear, because those are both like comparable 160 sets, you would have the almost the exact same defense on both sets. The difference being that the Burrower Boots, for example, give seven pierce added on, while Eternal gear gave no pierce. I think this pack in general is the worst decision they made this year, if I had to be brutally honest. I argue that this missed in a lot of ways, and really, I hope that the next time they do a pack with really, really cool spells and gear, I hope they think it through a little bit better. That's just my take on this. One, regardless of whether it's from a pack or not, this specific orientation of stats is just way too overpowered. Ranking up resist, HP, and pierce at the expense of one small stat like accuracy should never be on the table. If a set like this has such good pierce and such good resist, it should give up multiple utility stats, not just accuracy, but also pip chance, so that every school has a stat burden when rocking this. Or they could just make the stats not so overpowered, so you don't have to buy a pack in order to compete. For those months that this pack was out, the game was pay to win, especially if you wanted a PvP. I found it kind of repulsive. And while the pity system that they have for the, you know, the boss that you farm for it is great, the spell that drops are super diluted. While it's cool that every school gets a spell with the release of this pack, Farming for spellments is way, way worse because the drop tables are diluted. 
it. They made the boss very, very difficult to grind. I feel like it's only really realistic to do it for gear, not spellments. I can say this as someone who's about to max tier of literally every spellman in the game. I am nowhere close to this one, and I'm not sure I ever will be. I think a pack should be worth opening for cosmetics and for spellments for spells. Great. But the gear can never be so good that it just outclasses everything else in the game anymore. And in my opinion, the spellments, once they are farmable, should be way more realistic to farm than the solution they came up with. So while I could say some good things about dual schooling, Burrower Pack, nah, I can't. I hope I hope we don't get another repeat of that ever again. But there's still another super big thing that I think identifies 2023 as a really good year for Wizard 101. And that's the fact that their pity systems are way, way better now than ever before. I think especially looking at like, you know, how expansive some of these updates have become, you get a lot of content, but it's sometimes you got to square that content against how exhausted it can feel to get everything you need for every wizard to really experience what they've put out. And I think the biggest victory for this game in general has been how they've rolled out the pity system for Wallaroo drops because it really does show you can add two templates for every school and jewels that are all craftable with one reagent and not actually make it feel grindy. I have a feeling we're going to look back on this update and see it as a turning point. I can't really think of a negative thing to say about the Wallaroo update. In a lot of ways, they've created really balanced gear, they made a really fun environment, and they've added a pity system with this reagent stuff that's really really, really solid. I mean, yeah, you do need to get, you know, you do need to defeat some bosses in order to, like, you know, get the badges. But once you have the badges from defeating certain bosses, a very realistic number of times, you can craft anything you want for just some dream water. And the fact that you can also craft pins with dream water, I mean, this is one of the biggest things they've improved on since Novus. Raids and gold key bosses, when it comes to gear, are also amazing when it comes to the pity system. I can't recommend Walru enough simply because of the fact that, like, you don't have to grind it. You can actually enjoy your time there. You can actually take your time enjoying every part of the update. And it's not like you have a year of stuff to farm for like Novus. And circling back to dual schooling point, the pity system in Walru is so good that I could actually, like, you know, after a couple of days of farming, I could create a whole set of pins included just to test it out, and if it doesn't work, great, it's fine. It's not like it took me weeks to get there. Each school of pin that you choose to affix on a school represents a totally different layout, a totally different build that you could do. And for the first time, such a build isn't an extremely daunting task to actually make. I kind of love that they did this, because I think as time goes on, people will really create some really cool setup. All in all, y'all, I do think that there have been some pretty awful things that happened this year, but overall, I do think there's more positive things, especially recently. And if you clicked on this video just wondering about the state of Blizzard 101 in general as we go on to yet another new year, I think the real takeaway message is it's going through a lot of growing pains and it's coming out with some pretty cool stuff along the way. Let me know what you guys think of this year on Wiz. Do you guys think it was a good year, a bad year relatively? What do you think of Wallaroo? I look forward to looking at all of your comments in the comment section. Drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a sub if you're new, and if somebody hasn't told you you're awesome today, they doing something wrong. Stay awesome. See y'all soon. And yeah, y'all. Yeah.